text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? 245 Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Wednesday, October 26th, uh, Kelly Wednesdays. We have Kelly here to um, chop it up with us about this thing called real estate investing. Today's topic is... Um, Do you need to see a house? Do you need to see a house first before you place it under contract? I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so uh, if you want to get you pushed to the front of the line and get your questions answered um, um, on the Gator. live stream, huh? text Gator. Yeah, text the word Gator to the number G A T O R. Text the word Gator to the number. Um, if you want access to the contract that uh, I've been giving away since 2008, using personally since 2003, hundreds of thousands of individuals, maybe thousands, uh, have used it uh, over the years. Uh, text the word contract with no S. Contract does have an R. If you don't, it's contact. So contract. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, if you want to partner with us, text 5050 to the number, 5050, all together, no spaces, 5050 to the number if you want to partner and watch that video very carefully and uh, follow the instructions. It's, it, yes, yes, it's going, yeah, yes. Um, what else I got? Um Make sure you like and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, I need to have a little video to show how to do that too. I seen somebody, I was watching somebody else's video, uh, unrelated, and um, she like had a little what they call a B-roll to show how to subscribe, tap the little button, mm -hmm. then select all. So guess what? You are alerted whenever we do go live. You don't have to even worry about it. It just pops up on your phone. It's amazing. Um, you are alerted when we go live and when new content is uploaded, such as the video that I did uploaded yesterday on using Crexy, a real estate, a commercial real estate tool to help you find, analyze, find owners, even if it's in an LLC's phone, a phone number or a business entity in general, find their phone number. So we uploaded that video on yesterday. But if you didn't have the little if you didn't subscribe and have the, what else? Tap the little bell and had all, oh, you probably didn't know it exists. It exists, but now you do. So you just go to YouTube and do a search for Flipman and Crexy. It's spelled C-R-E-X-I and boom. Or you could text the letters X-I like Xerox Intelligent, X-I, to 205-964-524. Oh, well, that won't get you to see the video. Just go to YouTube and do a search for Flip Man and Crexy, right? Okay, so that's enough of that for right now. We'll, yeah. Yeah, C-R-E-X-I. All right. What does um, X-I mean? What, what does that mean? Examine? Commercial real estate. I know what the C-R-E means, but what the X-I means? Is that examine? Extra information? Google it. You should Google it if yeah. you don't know something. Oh boy, boy, it's no hypocritical, Tyrone. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. Um. So first question comes from Instagram. Um. Oh, from Roman. He said something like Greek letters. Roman. Um. Well, go ahead. Uh. He said, "Does your contract work in Texas?" Most definitely. All right. See. Um, let's see. Somebody on TikTok X, is that a power aid? No, that is oh no, no free advertisement. Um, I think they're talking about the blue bottle. <laughs> oh, didn't need it. This this is okay. So if you didn't know, right? 
this was formerly some dish liquid, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I bought this because the, the you see how unique this she loves that this spray bottle, the 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 uh the actual sprayer is. That's that's you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and so you know we like to start a spray a little clean around here, so it's filled with alcohol. I personally like to use 90% proof alcohol to clean things with my phones, mouse, me, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Me. So uh, so that's what that is. So we, we poured out the liquid, washed it out good, let it dry a little bit. Alcohol goes in here now. So boom. What else you need to know? Yeah. Is that the spray bottle where you had to hold it holds down? Huh? Oh no! It's just normal, but it just—it just got it. It, it yeah, sort of it, 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 it sprays out. It doesn't waste a lot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so okay. you know the alcohol. You know that. So. You can get it on Amazon. Huh? No, I can get this out Walmart. That's what I'm saying. You wouldn't have had to waste the dish soap. You oh. just bought that kind of a sprayer. Oh. oh wait a minute, but, you. But, but, but see, but Amazon sometimes a crapshoot. You don't know what you're getting. Like they have those like for natural hair girls. They uh -huh. have those I kind of bottles. I wouldn't know that. That's why I'm saying you could have just bought it on Amazon. But I yeah, I would like to see the quality as good as this. Yes. You ain't used it before. Yes, I have a spray bottle like that at home. <laughs> <laughs> for hell. <I'm> <laughs> Lord have <laughs> mercy. Wasting done. Okay. Um Welcome to the spray bottle channel. <laughs> My name is Ty. What is yours? <laughs> Crazy. All right. Uh, somebody on TikTok said, "Do you still wholesale or do you just flip houses now?" Well, I really didn't never. I've done flipping houses. I, I guess the, the 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 proper what is it? Um, I don't know what you call it. Gra graduation is you start out wholesaling, then you start flipping. I did that. I've done that. Right. Hate it because of what you have to go through, and then. For me, it's just both of them are time consuming. One of them is a lot. Well, the, the, both of them are time consuming, period. But one of them is more time consuming than the other and higher risk. Because somebody's money is at risk if you're flipping. Whether it's yours, somebody else's, or a combination of yours, combination of somebody else's, or yours, credit, or whatever. Something is at risk, right? And you have to deal with contracts. On, I can't stand that part of it. Just, oh, it's terrible. Then we just look at bare numbers, the ROI. Not, no, no, I'm not saying you can't make money on both. I'm just, just, just bare numbers. The ROI. I'm going, to, if I'm going to be flipping something, regardless of what stage of the process is in. The ROI on wholesaling dwarfs flipping. A hundred dollars, and sometimes zero. But I'm just going to use a hundred dollars for the math part of it. A hundred dollars. To make ten thousand, or you spend seventy thousand to make thirty thousand. Obviously, the thirty thousand is a bigger number, but the ROI when you compare the two, I think the hundred dollars to ten thousand is like nineteen hundred percent return on investment percentage, and I think on the thirty thousand on the seven, I'd be maybe wrong, but it's my it may be thirty percent or forty percent. But it's still not bad. That's good, or whatever. But how many of those hundreds? Let's just, let's just assume this was all. We this was this was the scenario. Every time you did one or the other, so I could have ten deals going as far as wholesale dollars with a hundred dollars invested in each one of them, and that'll be a total of a thousand dollars. To have ten deals. If I had to put out 70,000 each time, I would have to have 700,000 out there. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. <laughs> it's a no brainer. Kelly, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to start flipping, I would say it's, it's, it's a whole different business. Um, you have to really enjoy it. Yes. Um, or hire someone that enjoys it. Um, the only people that I've really known that's been super successful is obviously if you buy super, super cheap and put some money into it and flip it, but they always are managing their own teams, their own contractors. Um, like they have to, it's like a hands-on process for sure. Um, or you approach it like a, like a builder would, um, where you, even if you're not building homes, but you basically have your own framers, roofers, 
you know, concrete people and they're going in doing multiple at a time. Um, other, and they're running it like a business. Like it's a true, it's a whole thing outside of just real estate investing. Um, so I would say if you're gonna, if you're gonna, especially in this market, um, cause you can't, I mean, things are sitting on the market longer. You, you gotta get it dirt cheap and you gotta be, you know, you gotta have a system in place. Um, and you got to really love it because this is the market where you can actually um, lose a lot if you don't know what you're doing. Don't don't let HGT trick you. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? HGTV trick you. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I know it's four letters and that's one. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Brandy Rick from YouTube is saying, uh, hey, Flipman, do you have a price budget when it comes to land for sale in California? It don't matter if the numbers work. Um, and it needs to be about 60 to 50% of ARB. Uh, so I've been talking to a lot of land buyers this week, and that's kind of where they are if they're going to be paying out cash. So make sure it's a really good deal. All right. Um, this one says I ran across a lot that a lady is well, selling. Well, back uh, back on that. Uh, obviously, we want the really cheap stuff where we can get it, but that doesn't have to be a deal breaker if you can get the right terms, okay. aka on the finance. Yes, there's a caveat there. Yes. All right. Um, this one says I ran across a lot that a lady is selling. It is not a 300k ARV and up area is closer to 200, but she said that it originally was supposed to be a non unit, uh, I guess, condo on it. Would this be something you guys are interested in? Well, yeah, if it's zoned, if it's zoned for that, um, then yeah, most definitely. If obviously, I'm assuming if it's going to be nine units, uh, well, I don't know about the last side, it doesn't matter because you can go up, but. Uh, yeah, they definitely want to take a look at that. That zoning can, you know, even in lower priced area, which that's not that bad or whatever. That zoning is right. It, it, well, it sort of, well, it really, it sort of, it matters, but it doesn't matter in a sense. Again, going back to, and I've only, this has just come to me through just the network of people I deal with, as Kelly has them also, through the owner financing. That's if it's possible. It can be in cheaper neighborhoods. Uh, but it has to be very favorable returns or whatever. If you don't know what they need to be, I'll glad to give you, you know, you tell me what the situation is. I'll give you what my thoughts on what it, what it, what would make sense or whatever. But in that situation, if it was zoned uh, for, well, that would be commercial, commercial approved for nine units or whatever. Oh yes. Yeah, it still boils down to a good price, but yeah. All right. Um, this one came from Cool Breeze seven oh six on Instagram. They said, "What type of commercial building are you looking for, and will an old sports authority building work?" Okay, so normally for those, eh, that could probably be easily a, a, well, it could be all over the place. It could be anywhere from twenty thousand square feet or, or up. Ideally, um, the people that that uh, that uh, I know that are interested in those type of properties, they were preferred to be 40,000 square feet up now. The other thing is yeah. it could be smaller than that. Depends on how many acres it's sitting on, right? If it's sitting on, um, we'll say five developed acres, meaning, you know, the building may be only 20,000 square feet, but the rest of it is, you know, all parking lot or whatever, that's five acres, then that would that would make sense. You know, just to know the address, I'll you know, look it up and take a look or whatever. So did they say sports authority or academy sports? Sports, a sports authority, authority sports building. Authority. Was that big box? That's what I was trying to that's what I was wondering. Um, because a lot of times that's it's it's on a, a super long lease. So I was just wondering um if it's up for sale or like I would just like to know what the what the details of it is. Mm -hmm. It's gone dark, as they say. All right. Um, this one came from TikTok. They said, I'm interested in wholesaling um, here in Daytona Beach, Florida. How do I get started? Mm -hmm. in I, 
I was gonna say your 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 number one. Well, you here. That's how you get started. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Okay, I was gonna address the Daytona Beach part of it first. Oh, okay. so you're in a tourist destination. Isn't that a tourist destination? Um, so, you know, infield lots of designer premium in those cities, those type of markets, those beach towns. So, but uh, to answer your question on how do you get started? So Kelly sort of answered it. Uh, well, you're here, you've started. So now you need to uh, continue to put the uh, work in the bill. Why am I, why am I, uh, y'all can see me? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my laptop went out. Okay. What is going on here? Um, so, um, yeah, uh, what I was saying, yeah, so continue to educate yourself on the videos right here on this magnificent YouTube channel and, uh, everything you need to know, what, what, are, what is their name? Um, hmm, Agilis05 on TikTok. Okay, Agilis, oh, okay. Yeah, Maybe. but that's what you do. Just uh, tap the link there in uh, YouTube on my bio. If you're on YouTube, Instagram, that'll take you over to a playlist of videos that'll get you going. If if you want to access those play that playlist, also just text the uh, letters VIP to the number VIP. Like very important playlist. <laughs> You know, <laughs> don't. <laughs> I want to add that because I, I get that question a lot too, and I think I, I need. I've been working on something, but I haven't finished it. But it's about a personality. Like, what what is your personality? Because I will say that you know, there are some people that Ooh. they'll just do what they are told, like what, whatever you tell them to do, and they don't really uh, whether they like it or not, they get the job done. But it's some people that like they don't really enjoy the actual task. They're not gonna succeed, and I think that's why a lot of people don't do well. Even for me, I'm 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 guilty of it. Like if I don't really like doing a certain task that it requires, I don't do it well. Um, so I would ask myself, like, do you like talking to people? If you like talking to people, if you like going to their homes and you like having conversations and building, you know, rapport, then you really would be great at like starting to just drive around, talk to people, knock on doors, calling people. Um, co-calling people, text messaging people, because it's a really big people person on that side. But if you really just like to, you know, if you really have a great, um, like a business and a professional network, and you know that you have people that either have the money to buy property or are actively buying property, then then talk to that because they're going to talk numbers and they're going to talk business. Um, and, and usually those are for people that are like, you know, not big as far as like, a lot of small talk, they kind of like just like to get right down to it. So I, I would say evaluate what type of personality you are and and see what works for you, because maybe you could be the person that brings people buyers um, or you can be the person that brings people the, the actual deals from sellers. So I would evaluate my personality, too, as you're going through, gather the information from the videos, figure out what really works with your personality and then decide to go on just that particular um road you know i guess you say i feel like it's a better word, word but that direction um and i i really i do believe that you'll be way more successful if you actually are doing the things that require they will make you money that you actually like doing all right um let's see let's go back to youtube um this one says, hi, Flip Man and team. How do you comp a mixed-use two-unit building, one residential unit on top of a ground floor commercial unit? Um, it's hard to find similar types of properties that have sold recently. And I guess they're in New York. New York City. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, I go straight to yield, see what, their yield, what the yield is. Um, that is basically... Um, what is the rate of return on on the money that you put into it? Um, what is it returning as far as an investment? And then the cap rate is how safe it is. Like if it's between seven to 10, it's usually a safe investment. So I would look at the yield and cap rate and that's how I would determine if it's like a good deal. If they don't have any tenants, I would look at how much are things in that area that's similar, that's zoned for, you say it's residential, right? One residential on top. 
I would look at, I would do a market analysis and see what the risk would be and what they could be um, if it was compared and see what the the estimated yield and the estimated cap rates would be. But it's really tough just getting a true valuation of a property, um, especially when there is a it's unique to itself in that area. What do you say, Ty? Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It, it, okay. So he first went by, like you say, he didn't know, he didn't have anything that he doesn't have anything to compare it to. Um, now it just boils down to, and that's the most case with a lot of commercial real estate is, uh, what type of, uh, income it produces, you know, period. Either, the income it is producing currently and or can produce. Um, and it, from there, you may want to talk to a broker in that area to see what the cap rates are um, for similar type properties. Of course, if it's in New York City, it's going to probably three or four <laughs> percent, something ridiculous like that. Well, I guess not ridiculous for that market. But um, and then from there, you back door and see how cheap you can get that property. I'm assuming it's operational. Um, he didn't really indicate that or not, did he? Mm -mm. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Um, this one says, hello, Flipman and ladies. The purchase and sale agreement on D-Later is six pages long. Is this new? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's only one page. You you probably You're probably trying to print out just probably just trying to print the page without filling it out, right? And following the instructions in the pertinent video from the contract video. If you if you text the word contract um, to the uh, 205-964-5243, it is very important that you follow those instructions, right? And uh, that's going to provide you the information that you need. Okay. Um, this one came from Miss Lynn. She said, I saw quite a few vacant houses in a small town that I'm familiar with. Uh, the population is under 7,000, but I see over 1,800 cash buyers in the area. How difficult would it be to wholesale in a small town like this? I would first adjust the time because if it was just 1,800 from from no time period, I would I would want to know who's buy who's bought within the last year. If there's eighteen hundred buy, cash buyers in the last year, then that definitely changes the conversation versus eighteen hundred buyers in the last twenty years. Um, so I would I would make sure I would want you to make sure that you adjust uh, if you're using PropStream, adjust those filters if you're pulling those lists. Um, to see what's what they bought in the last year, even six months, honestly, because the market changed a lot in the last six months because a population under 7,000, that's tough. Um, today, I saw a property that come, came available, a wholesaler sent to me in my hometown. It was actually one of my childhood friends' home. And I was just sitting here thinking like, oh, I don't even know. I mean, I didn't even want to, because I was just like, I don't know if it, you know, it would bring that much. And I'm actually from a small hometown, and I didn't think that it would be something that I would want to invest in. So I would say definitely um, make sure that all your numbers and your filters are right before you, um, as you're evaluating, if you want to do deals in that area. And then it says hey, a lot of vacant homes. That scares me because if it's a lot of vacant homes with 1,800 cash buyers, that something is not something. Right. About Why hasn't somebody bought them? Yeah, I don't see. I don't feel like we have a full picture. All right, this one came from her billboard on TikTok. She said, is $800 enough to start wholesaling? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. Um, if I had $800 to start wholesaling, I would, um, I would get a good um, source to look up data, which you can get. All of it is really free, um, but I would just, get a good source, either go through deal you later to get like an analyzing source or either go through like, um, um, what is it? Preview, um, to look up deals. Um, and I would just, just one source and become an expert at that. And all of my outreach would be, um, focused on 
you know, connecting with wholesalers, other wholesalers that are doing deals, other buyers that are buying deals. I would just focus all my energy on that and, and focus on bringing them as many deals as possible um, by, by trying to speed up the process by using leveraging software information to do it. But yeah, it's definitely doable. I don't even say, I don't even think you would need 800. What would you do? Did you, are you still looking up currently? Are you trying to say <laughs> Figure out what XIV. Oh uh, no 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 no! It, it, it only came up with the Roman Ro Roman numerals, the fourteen. I think. Um, Greek uh, better as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, eight hundred bucks. That's a lot um, to start with, right? Um, I would just probably just do text messaging, right? Um, now, if you if you if you can pound out calls, now that'll save you some of that money. But um, I, I would do text messaging. Um, if you want to learn how to do that the way we do it, text the word text to the 205-964-5243. But that'll cost you about, mm, that'll cost, uh, what you're going to have to skip trace your list. So, eh, well, I, I might be wrong on that because that's only going to last you probably about two months. Let me see how many you can buy. Um, no, you can, yeah, you can get a whole list. Yeah, you can get uh, that whole 800 period or 800 every month. That is a good question. But, uh, let me just give you both in. Um, uh, so, yeah, so you can you can have that going for two months for that 800. That should you should be able to pull a deal out of that. Out of that if you own it, should be able to because you're dealing with a, a list of a couple of thousand people that you've skipped trace. And so you're not going to be sending out, but Huh. Um, recommended maybe about anywhere from 150 to 300. So that'll last you a minute because you can um, you can re-upload those lists too. So, yeah. So Ty does not know how to use Google, FYI, y'all. What? Crexy is Commercial Real Estate Exchange Inc. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I just did XI by itself. <laughs> That's what I did. I didn't do. I knew what the CRE meant. I was just doing the XI by itself. So there you go. Um, this one on TikTok says, "Do you think I can do a deal in a week?" So get that out of your mind. It's possible, but get that out of your mind. Your network will have to be on swole. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, uh, yeah. can I go back to the other question? Like, well, you made a, you addressed, uh, brought up a really good point. Um, eight hundred a month or eight hundred um, total? Because I always tell people, if you can't do it for three months, if you can't, if your expenses can't hold for three months, ninety days, then that's that. You know, you need your budget needs to be able to say that if you didn't make no money. I can still do this for 90 days. I can spend this amount of money for 90 days. That's how you know what your true budget would be. But uh, but yeah, the week, the week, you know, a part of me thought to this week I was going to have one done in a week, honestly, Ty, but um, mm -hmm. they haven't gotten back with me fast enough. So that's the other thing, like, you, it's a lot of factors, like, people got to get back to you fast enough, people got to, you know. Yeah, a lot of it's out of your control. Yeah. <laughs> Title company number one, you know, they may not even be able to get it back in that time frame, you know. So yeah. Um, you know, so but I hope it's not a reason you want to do it in a week because well, your situation is your situation, but you're under pressure to have to do it under a week because of whatever's going on in your life, then you need to seek out something else for now. Because this is like you say. Everything got to be working right. Even if everything working right, it's just hard to just do yeah, it. Yeah, people move slow. Yeah, because they ain't gonna be moving. They, yours ain't. That, that's not the only deal they're working on, mm -hmm. on, on all levels. You know, so well, I, most people involved. So, well, besides you and the seller, it might be just you and the seller, the only one that they're working on. So, tough. All right. Um, this one came from Mike Sites. He said, who do I talk to about vacant land? I had a property under contract for 50K and I could not find a buyer at the time. So the contract lapsed and the owner decided to put it on Zillow for 55K. He said the lot has still not sold and he wants me to, I guess, pay proof of funds before he will reassign the contract. How would I handle that situation? Well, 
Um, at first, I mean, is it something that you should be chasing down, right? Like, is 50K the right mm-hmm. number? Um, because if he put it on Zillow himself, which Zillow is a powerful marketing tool, it's the number one real estate site in in the U.S. at least. And so if he's put it on there and no one has has moved on it, it's probably not the right not the right price. So I would definitely go back and evaluate um, your numbers. And um, since you don't have it on the contract, I mean, it's land; it's not going anywhere. So um, don't be afraid to like, you know, send to people that you think might be interested and let them know, hey, I don't have a son of contract. I have a relationship with the seller, but this is what he's asking. Like, would this be something that you'd be interested in? Um, so at least, you know, so now since you're not on a contract and he wants proof of funds, you can at least reverse engineer it where you will find a buyer first. They will commit. And then they could, they will, you, you would basically use them as your proof of funds and your um, earnest money. Um, And then, um, and then you can proceed. Honestly, I don't know why he's asking for a proof of funds for land. Um, Very rare, but um, he just tell him you can give him earnest money. Um, But proof of funds really doesn't matter because most banks don't even loan to his land. So I don't know why, unless he just wants you to know that he wants to know that you're going to pay for it in cash. Like, um, I would just reverse engineer it and find a buyer first. And, and then if there's nobody that's interested, then that's a deal that you know that you can just move on from. Yeah. Um, like I say, uh, it's, it's, if, if it's there on Zillow, it, it still may sell there, but it definitely sounds like he's asking full price on it. Um, again, go back to him and see if, um, if he would be open to some terms on it or whatever. So uh, that, that'll make it a lot more attractive to sell, assuming that it's not tremendously overpriced. All right. Um, this one says, hey, everyone, shout out from, okay, well, she's speaking to everybody, but she said shout out to everyone from California where everything is high and so are the people off the chain here. <laughs> um, let's see. This one says, can you work with me, Queen? Maybe she's talking to you, Kelly. She says she has 30 years of customer (laughs) service. Let's connect. I'm saying maybe she was talking to somebody in the uh, the chat. Absolutely. Um, (laughs) Oh, my handle is Kells always. Um, I think they can put it in the chat for me. Yeah. 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 While we um, doing it. Okay, we have so many banners. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let's see. You wouldn't want. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you know, double standard. So people, have, I I didn't have not watched Woman King, but I was just like, I kind of had a little. I didn't really like the title of it that much. So I know I'm about to piss a lot of people off. Don't but ask the question. Double stand, the standard, right? Because you didn't want to be called queen. <laughs> we we. You ain't going to get into that? <laughs> we ain't politically correct around here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, just going to tell you. I mean, I'm just right. saying, I, I, call me queen. I don't want to be called a woman king. That sounds yeah. weird. But anyway. I'll still, okay, I'm on the same <laughs> page with you. What 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 are you implying? <laughs> it's just like, I, like I, what? I know that they mean warrior. Like, I don't have a problem with warrior, but I don't yeah. know why I had a little bit of, I'm like, king, that sounds pretty, sounds pretty masculine. <laughs> Like women can't be tough, you know what I mean? Like we gotta be a man to be. T- I don't know. Anyway, well, now, what 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 action movie you don't see right in these days that a woman ain't just kicking multiple men's? You know what? Right. <laughs> I was like a woman can be tough. Y'all better to get y'all better to get some folks beat up out here, man. <laughs> Thank you, nigga. Women war queens. Like why we can't be that? So I don't know why. And I know it's a, I know it's a popular film, but I just I don't know why I had just a little bit of a. Well, a couple of people seen it. You seen it, right, Jess? Oh yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Well, they call her <laughs> the background. You know why Lupita knew? Um, uh, she why she didn't play in it? Yeah, like I was gonna get to that. Yeah, because it's not I, historically correct. I was gonna get to that. Yeah, they yeah. capture slaves. <laughs> yeah, was a, they actually was... did the opposite in real life of what happened in the movie. Yeah. But I, oh. I think it was important in the movie for them to call her the Woman King because she had 
it's almost like she had made herself as valuable as the king because she protected their land. In mm -hmm. the movie, that's what the premise of right. it was. Wow. She's a woman king because she held just as much, like, you know, she was held in regard just like the king would have mm -hmm. been. So I guess at that time, all his wives were the queens, but she was over them. So she mm -hmm. was the woman king. She was better than them. Mm -hmm. So it didn't have anything to do with like them making her seem masculine. It's just it was more her title. But I know that words perpetuate certain things. Yes, and so yeah, the yes. intentions I feel like to the to the public is different. Like yes. how she hasn't seen it, so you wouldn't know. But yeah, that's what they meant. Um that's what they meant. But either I'm way, not say yeah, either way, keep your keep your head up, queen. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to do that to be powerful. It's not going to be very politically correct because I'm not. I'm really yeah. a certain way on certain issues. But the movie was very good. Yeah. Um, That's not going to come out right. I mean, it was. It was, it was very good. Oh, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying. What I want, really want to say, I can't really say. Oh, no, we tired of getting blocked on TikTok. Yeah, we're, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we get tired of it. Yeah, sick of it. Um, all right, this one came from Jordan Stewart. He said, what's up, y'all? Me and the seller agreed on a price. Um, they want some time after closing to get their stuff moved out. What's the best way to go about that? And what can I put in the contract to make sure that they move out? Yeah, um, in the contract that I use, they actually have a clause for that where you will basically um, time of occupancy. So you can either put it, you can have um, a clause in there to basically say that it will be delivered to them vacant or it will not be delivered to them vacant. And I just have a little area where they check will not. And then it says that the, the property will be delivered to them vacant or it'd be vacated by and they have a certain date and time. And obviously you want to agree with that. You want to make sure that if you're going into that, that the, the buyer is aware um, of that up front. So like if it's 30 days, 60 days that you agree to, you want to make sure that the buyer is aware of it and make sure that you've already made arrangements. Like if they're going to be paying rent to you, like if they're a seller, they're going to be paying you rent for 30 or 60 days um, um, or what the situation is. So you want to make that very clear in the original contract. And then you want to basically make sure that you communicate that to the buyer. Um, I keep losing my place on here. Why? I'm sorry. Okay, this one says, with values declining and winter approaching, what are some of the best ways to go about wholesaling today? Same way. Yeah, it's the same way. I mean, man, the market is like, the amount of activity that's going on right now, especially in like, the wholesaling world is like it's it's unreal. Um, I think now sellers are starting to feel it, um, and so they're starting to come up with creative ways um, to do deals. They're starting to you know figure out how to sell their properties because there's we're starting to see sixty seven. I was reading something the other day just in Birmingham. There's been an uptick of twenty three percent. The properties have been on the market twenty three percent more than it was last year. Um, so so people are definitely uh, it's still out the people out there buying. Buyers are definitely buying. They're looking for the best deals because they know that they can get some really great deals right now. Um, sellers are still needing to sell because people are still moving. People are still trying to get out of the situations they're in. Um, but these, I mean, the wholesaling literally is the only strategy that works no matter what type of market we're ever in. It literally works in every market that we are in, in a boom or in a bust. We, wholesaling always works. All right. Um, this one says... I'm starting wholesaling with a friend and we have done all of our research and we're getting, we're going to make a deal by the end of the year. Okay. Manifesting. Um, this says starting January and we want 20 to 30 K a month. Is this possible for us? It sure is, but you got to have a, have a, um, a game plan and a budget and, um, you know, with 20 to 30 K, like, what does that look like? 
for your business model, do you need a team? Are you going to be only what type of deals are you going to be doing? Are you going to only do a certain type of deal that gives you wider spreads or are you going to do multiple deals that give you micro spreads? Um, so I really would say, how are you going to approach that? Um, and, and then obviously, like, um, you know, how, how are you going to execute that? So um, it's doable. Let me see, starting wholesaling with a friend. We've done it. So starting January, so that's less than 90 days away, right? Y'all like, what is that, 70 days? Mm -hmm. So you just start, huh? Yeah, something like that. So if you're just starting real estate and wholesaling, um, I would, and you want to make that type of money in, by January, you definitely would need um, some funding, some marketing money. Um, but I would associate myself with as many real estate networks as I can. So whether it's your buying memberships to uh, to to real estate, getting into ties, master whatever whatever networks you can get in, you need to buy, you need to pay to play because that's the best way that you're going to get inserted into people that are doing deals. They're usually in paid networks. Um, most of my buyers are come from some type of paid network that can, can if they can't do it, they can connect me with someone else. So. Um, you're going to have to uh, figure out what that looks like for you and get a real game plan of how you're going to leverage those, those connections. All right. Um, this one says, what is the average wholesale deal assignment fee? And if you know how much will it be for the Nashville area? It depends. I feel like it goes up every year. Um, I remember when five and 10 K was like, the goal now i know some people that say they don't even get out of bed unless it's 17k or i know somebody down in pensacola that they don't even work the deal unless it's, they're gonna make 35k like it really depends on the person um and the company that's doing it honestly what do you say Ty? yeah um that, that's gonna vary from market to market uh what type of neighborhoods are you targeting properties your type of properties you're targeting um i'm assuming you're meaning houses though but uh those are going to be two of the biggest things there and then at the end of the day it's going to be your negotiating st skills um on um on, on deals period but mm -hmm. even with that being said um again it's, it's, it's still going to be what your what your end game is and what how much money is going to be enough for you to to uh to do the things you want to do um or what your uh overall investment strategy or or end game is so i think i said the same thing all right this one says do you think true people search is a good skip trade service it's free yeah i think oh i use fast people search um yeah if it's i mean it's better than what you had before. <laughs> you know, it may not have got you to, you know, maybe give you, giving you a number that they had, uh, you know, three years ago, but it's better than what you got before. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's, like I say, it's free. So, you know, um, you know what that comes with. You know, even if, if you search 10 numbers and 20% of them are right, you know, those are two leads that you require for nothing. Right. So just just have those expectations. All right. Um, this one says, hey, Footman, would you recommend always getting earnest money deposit from cash buyers? If so, how much should I ask for? Five hundred to two thousand or take their word and wait for them to show up on closing day with the money. <laughs> and the famous words of Fred G. Sanford, allow me to answer your third question first. No, never just wait for them. Just wait up uh, to come to closing. You got you to get them put some skin in the game. Ideally, nothing less than a thousand. But I'm out, you you actually, and it just depends on the, the, the amount of the property. If it's a, a deal, you got it in the contract for 8000 and they're going to buy from you for $12,000. Earnest money is more than enough. You know, so, but try not to go below that. You know, the more you get, the more skin you put in the game. Most, most uh, just real buyers, you know, you told them twenty five hundred dollars, they're not even gonna sneeze at it. You know, where I'll have it at my attorney's office, or where do I need to send it? You know, what what 
what title company or turns off, where do I need to send it? They, they're not even going to question it or whatever. So, yeah. And, and just, just FYI, just as far as logistics, most title companies or lawyers offices, they're not going to proceed with much until they have earnest money <laughs> um, in escrow. Um, so you won't have to wait until closing day because they are going to be calling you and your buyer asking them when they're going to get their earnest money in so that they can start a title search. Um, most, most title companies I know won't even start a title search until they have earnest money in, 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 in their account. So just FYI. All right, let's see. Um, this one says, what does it mean to be in guard guardianship or guardianship court for a property that is? Um <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, because everybody uses different terms in different states, so I don't know what state they're in, but um, in guardianship or in guardianship court, um, typically is not, is, well, in the state, is usually not used as far as a, it relates to the property, it relates to the individual itself. So, like, if you have um, let's just say like an executor of state, right? Like, let's just say you have someone like your mom or dad or someone is getting, or your grandmother is getting older and they can't make, they, they've been ruled by the by the state or by the judge that they cannot make decisions on their own. Um, and then they give you um, guardianship um, or executor to make those decisions. Then they have, they have, they can make decisions on all things that that particular person has in their name or in their possession. Um, so that's basically, so basically you would have to have their sign off on anything, um, relating to that property or property sale or any type of agreement. The official definition is according to the old Google, <laughs> a guardianship is a court proceeding to protect the interest of someone who is not legally, legally or mentally capable of conducting his or her own affairs. This is the process where a guardian is appointed for another person to handle, handle the ward's personal or business affairs. Yay. What Kelly said. <laughs> like, I mean, I had to go back into my vocabulary terms. <laughs> But but again, it's still in that state may mean something else. Yes, that's the thing. I know I know Alabama contract law pretty well, like really, really well, I would say. When it gets to other states, I'm like, ah, let me let me, let me tell you what it means in Alabama. <laughs> it might mean the same in other states. Um, all right. Um Okay, somebody asked on here, and we've been had a few people ask on TikTok and everything. How do you get the one page contract? Mm -hmm. um, get jewels. <laughs> I thought you were going to say earlier that um, this contract made me hundreds of thousands of dollars of money, like dollars. You said it's been used by hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so. And I know I have other video, videos out there explaining how to get the contract and all this stuff, but this is the most recent one. So you want to do this. And you might see it say, hey, I start, I start out the video. Hey, you can get the same contract out of you, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I didn't see this video. No, you hadn't if you asked the question. So watch the video. Follow the instructions um, in the video to access the contract for free. Also, it's going to allow you to, to uh, it's going to show you how to fill it out for sellers and buyers and how to get it signed virtually. Now, um, most people know what to do, but I always going to, I don't, because everybody's brains don't work the same. And then some people just don't listen. I'm one of them or whatever. Uh, you send me a text message. If it's pretty long, 
I sure. might not, I might miss something, right? And you might sit twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, I might miss something, right? Um, no, I know some cats that's real to pay attention to detail. I ain't one of them. Um, so I get it. So you go to the, you go to, you say, you go to the site and then you just try to print it out. <laughs> That ain't gonna work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to fill it out and then print out, print it out. Most people do that, but for those that don't, just understand it's free. You know what I'm saying? Um, we can go to the topic. Yeah, we can go with the topic. They they ready to go. All right, so um <laughs> y'all doing y'all thing today? Yeah. Okay. Um but that ain't why I said that I don't have yeah, so um, yeah, we ain't, I don't know what didn't have my rub bills and stuff. Um, so um what what is the topic? <laughs> do you need to see a house first before putting it under contract? Okay, do you need to see a house first before you put it under contract? No. But you need to have a really good idea, a really and you can always go back and edit it, or whatever, but no, you don't, but you need to be very confident that the conversation that you've had with the seller um, and the price you all have negotiated and the condition based on what they've told you makes it a deal. Now, you still need to confirm what was said, the condition that you thought it was in based on what they told you. So whether that's you going out to take photos, which you're going to need those anyway to market your deal, photos and video, or someone that's representing you, or maybe the seller even sends them to you, whatever. But then whatever price you locked in, okay, so yeah, that makes sense. Matter of fact, it's a better deal than what I thought. Or it could be, oh, they, mm, they said um, you can still live in this house. Not under my definition. So now... You have to go back to the selling. You want to probably make make that um, somewhat clear. Hey, you know, we're going to go ahead and do the contract based on what you said. These numbers will work. But just understand that once I actual lay eyes on it in whatever format that, hey, it may be open to renegotiation. You need to sort of make that clear if you're going to do a site on the scene or whatever. But, yeah, I do it, do it all the time. Now, now, again, going back to land, that's one of the great things about land, too, right? That you don't ever have to, in most cases, have to ever visit it or whatever. Now, you do the same thing with houses, but at some point, some photos, you need to know what's going on with it, right? Unless it's just some, like you say, maybe some photos online or something already, but assuming you hadn't seen it in any form of uh, format more than what you could do on Google or whatever, and that's not enough because sometimes those don't be current uh, visuals of the outside of the property, then yeah, you can do it, but it just needs to be understood that this price may change based on once I actually see the property in whatever format. So what are your thoughts? Uh, say, um, yeah, I mean, um, I was, my, my answer to that question was like, someone needs to see it, uh, especially yeah. if it's a new area. Um, or if you got it at like, dirt cheap where you almost can rebuild a whole house like you got at land value um but someone needs to see it um so yeah, like like you like Ty was saying like um team up with people you know that are in areas like I had actually I need someone to go see a house in Mobile right now <laughs> so um oh, I got that. okay yeah I, I mean I need to go somewhere because because I mean I don't know what it would look like and pro and we and there's a lot of different ways to do this like you can have the seller, uh, there's a list. I have like a 90, a 90 checkpoint list of where sellers can uh, go in and they'll take a picture of every every angle. But trust me, there's still going to be something, especially if the seller doesn't <laughs> want you to see, they're going to make sure you don't see it. So I always say, even if it's um, with that checklist, if you had someone that you can team up with, you leverage that person. Um but, you know, you definitely want to make sure that at some point you see it, especially before you put down earnest money on it, because 
you want to take that time to, for due diligence to actually do some type of due diligence and making sure that it's, you know, it's a property that you actually want to, um, that you can actually sell or wholesale. Okay. All right. So, um, yes. Oh, no. Okay. So, uh, we've been rolling pretty hard here, guys. Uh, uh, Kelly, tell them how they can find you. Yes. Yeah, so, you can find me on um, Instagram at Kels Always. Um, and, guys, they have been, y'all guys have been sending some really good stuff as far as lots over. Um, we have, um, just because of that, I have, um, we have people that are buying right now that we need lots in um, the Houston area, the Dallas, Texas area, um, the Jacksonville, Palm Coast, Florida area, the Fulton County, Georgia area, the Marion County and Citrus County areas in Florida, the Charlotte County and Lee County areas in Florida, and um, and then obviously the Nashville area um, and Tennessee. So. Um, if you have lots in these areas, please, please, please send it to us. Um, we have um, buyers that are actively buying like right now um, that are ready to move right now on these infield lots. So keep keep them coming. Um, if you don't have them in the area, still keep them coming. Make sure, though, it has high sales activity. Make sure it's within a mile away from a new construction area. Um, and it'd be great if you already have connection with the seller and you guys are even, you don't have to have it under contract, but it'd be great if you've already made contact with the seller and you have an idea of what they're asking for, because we can get your an answer back a lot faster. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, um, appreciate Kelly joining us today, uh, with all the insight just reading here on my, uh, Instagram, Kanye West shows up uninvited to Skechers headquarters. Interesting. So that's all we have for today, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll be on tomorrow. Uh, Flipper Dark 242 at 8.05 p.m. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, 8.05 p.m. So um, if, make sure you like and share this. And again, uh, YouTube, subscribe. Tap the little bell, select all, so you're alerted whenever we go live <laughs> and um, uh, post new videos. So check out the video from yesterday on uh, on the real estate investment, too. Just do a search for Flipman uh, Crexy, C-R-E-X-I. We're out. Text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? 205 964 Yep, yep. 205